I loved it. I personally, I thought they were going to trade uh, Joe Jimenez and um, for a reliever on a one-year deal. I was listening to the pod yesterday and you were saying how relievers are so like volatile and one year they're, they're really good. And then the next year they seem to struggle. And I think that's so true. Like I feel like a lot of the best relievers in baseball kind of come out of nowhere and kind of hit for a few years and then just kind of fall off. And I'm not saying that's going to happen with Jimenez, but the fact that you can get a potential everyday uh, outfielder and a guy who can play infield too, and, and Mallory, I believe that's how you say it. Um, I was really excited, and he's only 22 years old. I, I really like his swing. I believe he had a, a good walk percentage too. His OPS was over 800, and um, I believe he, he climbed up the system at three different levels this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I really like it, and I think he fits perfectly in that Tigers outfit that has so many lefties. And I'm really excited for the future of the Tigers outfield. Now you have Parker Meadows, Riley Green, uh, Campos, and now you add uh, Mallory as well. I'm I'm excited for it, and I think at the very least he could probably be like a platoon outfielder, which we know Scott Harris uh, likes to do. Uh, he fits what Scott Harris was selling to us after he got the job, uh, a guy who – has some control of the strike zone, for instance. Um, So it's nice to see that the first real substantive move that Harris made in terms of an addition uh, is someone who fits what he was talking about. That just wasn't empty rhetoric uh, a couple months ago. So, yeah, solid trade. And who knows what the left-handed reliever they got. I mean, he might blossom into something. He might, and that's okay. Uh, Joe Jimenez resurrected his career. Uh, last year, uh, there were certainly many times over the last few years I thought they would they DFA him, uh, but you know he hung on and did a good job and made himself valuable. So kudos to him. I hope he does well. I, you know, I'm a prospect guy, so I love getting shiny new toys to go and evaluate. Um, and I think that I think uh, um, Malloy certainly uh, fits that mold. He is different from anything we've seen in a Tigers lineup, I think, for the last few years because he can, I don't know how to put this nicely, take pitches out of the strike zone. Mm-hmm. Um, he's patient. He doesn't just swing early and often. Um, and and that's not necessarily a knock. We've seen some decent hitters you know, with the Tigers, but they like to swing the bat a lot. So their walk rates are low and all that fun stuff. Uh, Malloy's very patient, I think, um, I think he can get too passive at times, and I think that's where you see some of the strikeouts come in. It's less of swing and miss and more of I'm in a bad situation, and then if I swing and miss at one pitch, then I strike out. Um, but he's he's very patient. He, he has really good knowledge of the strike zone, um, so he doesn't chase very often. I mean, his, his chase rate numbers, and this is, I think, coming straight off of Baseball America, was like 18% or something. It was ridiculously low. Like it's, it's legitimate knowledge of the strike zone and feel for where the strike zone is. Um, mm-hmm. He pulls the ball a lot. He, do, he he really tries to pull everything. It seemed like when I, when I watched him and um, so I wonder how that's going to play out with pitchers who can actually hit the outer half consistently um, at some of the levels. He was just fouling those off and fighting off to his credit until he got a mistake over the middle around the inside half. And um, he can turn on a ball really well. Yeah, you know, I, I I don't think he's an outfielder based on the the people I've talked to who have seen him uh, play live. They say he looks uncomfortable out there. Uh, so I think long term he's probably a third baseman. I've heard good things about his arm strength. Um, I think it was a really good trade. I I didn't look into the reliever at all. I don't know anything about Higginbotham, um, but I, I know Malloy for sure is is a very good piece to get for a one year or one year reliever uh, in in Jimenez. Um, I mean, if you think about it. it I know we haven't really put our list together. I haven't really thought about it, but I, I think Malloy's easily top eight, if not higher in, in the Tigers organization right now in terms of prospects. Um, I, I've, you know, scouts have said that they, they have him up to maybe even a, a 50 future value, which is ridiculous to get for one year of Joe Jimenez. So um, whether he becomes a, a big league regular or a platoon guy, I think this was a, a really good return. And I think it's a skill set the Tigers don't have which when it's the first move of new management really tells you they're going to try to change things up, hopefully. So I put together a clip of all of, uh, all of Henry Malloy's t- uh, home runs I could find. There were, he had a two home run game in Asheville that uh, wasn't on the app. Uh, but, you know, Nashville, I think, is, is notoriously small park, but maybe just for lefties, I don't know. Um, 
And then today I decided, you know what, I'll just take a look. Because you know, just looking at all the home runs doesn't really teach you a, a whole lot. He did have one to center field and one to right center field. So was, that was nice. And, and and he did go oppo in the AFL. But um, so I decided to just look at every single plate appearance in AAA. He got called up to AAA in mid-September. And yeah, the uh, to Trevor's point, yeah, he does not expand the zone. The only time he'll expand the zone is is he he's – Kind of similar to to what we saw from Riley Green and Spencer Horkelson. If they get ahead like three zero, they're just swinging. <laughs> it's like it's not even like mm-hmm. they're just like they're swinging to try to hit a home run. And and I saw him do that on three zero pitches, on two zero pitches, in three uh, one pitch even. But other than that, like the, the only it seems like uh, he was having some trouble when when pitchers would pound him inside. But that's not terribly uncommon for any hitter. Um, and yeah, you know when John was. Uh, you did the uh, Kyle Lewis swing comparison, John, yesterday, and I kept you know, I kept looking at him like God. His swing reminds me so much of somebody, and I couldn't I couldn't put my my finger on it until I think I figured it out today. I think it's Vernon Wells. Okay, um, he's he's got this kind of he's kind of crouched a little bit, and he's got this suddenness with his mm. bat where it just he's kind of he he has a little bit of pre swing movement, but then he's calm, and then he just kind of explodes, and uh, it just reminded me of Vernon Wells for some reason. So. I don't know. That's an old-fashioned comp right there. Well, it was like I was trying to come yeah. up with the swing. Like, yeah, the swing reminds me of somebody. Yeah, and Vernon Wells hasn't been, uh, you know, like a good big leaguer in what, 10, 10 years? I think he – I don't know when he retired. But um, it was just because he had kind of a unique swing. But, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think he's going to start right in AAA. Uh, they, and we'll probably see him in the big leagues this year. And that – you know, to get a player – uh, you know, a prospect that good, that close to the big leagues is pretty rare these days, particularly for relievers. So, yeah, hat, hat tip to Scott Harris. And I also have not looked into Jake Hidden Botham um, uh, much, although I, I looked that he didn't really pitch much in 2021 and through what, 50 innings this year. So, who knows? 